Hi, in this tutorial video I am going to cover how to set up uh, and run an AC Suite with PSIM. We are going to use this buck converter as an example. If we run this we can see that it is bucking uh, the output voltage, uh, so 12 volts input and we're getting about 5 volts on the output. Um, okay, so let's set up our AC Suite. So the things that we need to do with the AC Suite is we're going to end up in putting a perturbation into the reference voltage here. Let's just pull this over. We'll put a perturbation into here and we're going to measure what the uh, change is on, on the output. Uh, so I've got a perturbation set up already. I have it enabled and disabled and I have hotkeys for those but you can use the check mark and the X, X up here as well. So I'm just going to enable this circuit uh, and we'll just put it in the circuit. Okay, now that I've got it into circuit, let's um, sort out the frequencies that we're going to need to, to sweep over. So I uh, think that we should probably sweep from around 200 hertz uh, to get a good idea of what the more or less DC response will be, and then sweep all the way up to around 40 kilohertz, which is you know just under half of the switching frequency of 100 kilohertz here. So let's now look at a couple points during the sweep to see what uh, the response is going to be like. So, and the reason we're going to do that is the way the AC seat works in, in PSIM. So to, to get an idea of that, we'll just go up here and grab the, the blocks that we're going to need to use. So from elements, go to other, and we'll grab the AC sweep file. And we'll also go back into elements, go into other, and then over to probes. And there's the AC sweep probe that we need here. There's also a loop probe, but we're not going to cover that in this tutorial video, just the AC sweep probe. So we'll grab the AC sweep probe, and we're going to put that where we're going to need to look at the AC sweep result. So as I mentioned before, what the AC sweep is going to do is we're going to, is we're going to sweep a bunch of frequencies into the reference, and then the AC sweep probe is going to compare the amplitude of the signal being inputted here, and the phase, and we're going to get the, the Bode plot out. So, uh, as I said before, we're going to look from 200, and then we're going to go up to 40k, uh, and then we need to um, set some other parameters here. So there's number of points. This is how many frequency, what our frequency sweep is going to be. Flag for points, this is going to be a linear or logarithmic spacing. If it's a zero, this is logarithmic spacing. So we're going to do 51 points, logarithm spacing, source name, V sine 1. What needs to happen is that this source name needs to match this name. So V sweep, we'll take that, and th this needs to match, and it is case sensitive. That's an important thing to note. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is the start and end amplitudes. What, what should we set these up as? Okay, so let's have a look at some of the points, data points in, the, in this frequency spectrum to get an idea of what these things should be in the end. So let's close that up. Let's disable the AC sweep and let's have a look at what happens when we run this say at 200 Hertz with a peak amplitude of 0.1. Okay so I've run this and let's look and see what the uh, output voltage uh, looks like compared to the uh, sweep. So we can see that we have a perturbation amplitude of 0.1, but the effect on the output voltage is uh, a 1 volt uh, swing, essentially. So we need to make sure then that, uh, that, that things don't get a little too, too out, of, out of hand on the output voltage here. So we need to make sure that this input signal is small enough that, that the output voltage is, is not swinging by, by and affecting things in a negative manner. Okay, so, so point one seems to be okay. Uh, and let's sort of go through some of the other frequency points and have a look and see what's going on. So let's have a look at now 1K. And we can see that actually the frequency of the, or the amplitude of the perturbation on the output is actually increasing. Uh, let's have a look at 2K. And we can see that really now this has a major effect now. So what we should be looking at is, is making sure that this is staying, this perturbation is staying within uh, sane boundaries. And what I mean by that is if 
say we had put in a perturbation of one uh, or maybe 0.5 into this uh, as the V sweep amplitude, uh, and we had a look at the output, we'd see that uh, we were exceeding 12 volts here, which is greater than the DC bus voltage here. So that's this is not actually giving us true results, and then and we've actually shifted the the average point upwards. So really, what we've done by having in too large of a peak amplitude is we're 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 changing the effect of the boat plot. And we're not actually getting us uh, an appreciation for what um, the 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 response will be like when we're controlling this. So we're not getting the true boat plot. We're getting a, a shifted and distorted version of that. So let's go back to, to point one. Let's have a look at um, at 2.5k. So there's going to be a sort of a little peak. Uh, and amplitude, um, so we can see that this is now still resonating, um, that the, the peak to peak amplitude is not too extreme. Let's now like bump up to higher frequencies, so move up to 10k, and we can see all of a sudden that the amplitude has really uh, decreased. Um, so now we need to make sure that um, we're getting a uh, we still have a, a, a signal that we can measure here. So the peak to peak here is still looking okay, but potentially as we uh, creep up the spectrum, um, we might start running into a situation where we lose um, the frequency that we're trying to look at. So let's just keep sweeping up here, up towards uh, our final point of 40K. And we can see that it really is struggling now to, to have the, the perturbation frequency here. So maybe we can try bumping this up a little bit at the, at the higher end. So let's see what happens at, at 0.5. Okay, now we can see that there's, there's a main frequency component for us to look at. So I think that kind of uh, sorts it out for us. So as you'd expect, there was um, a, an increase or a, a gain at low frequencies, and there was uh, attenuation at higher frequencies. So we'll set up our AC sweep to accommodate for that. So we'll start at, at lower frequencies, so probably 0.05 or so, and then we'll sweep up to 0.4 um, at, at the higher frequencies. Uh, and then we can, so the extra frequencies for points, we'll fill in a couple of these in a moment. But, so let's just go ahead and sweep this now. So we'll enable the block and run the AC sweep. Okay, so here's our AC sweep result. And so it looks pretty good. Um, we can have a look here and see that there's a bit of a peak at, at two and a half uh, or one, one and a half to two kilohertz. So actually it starts you know, around about 1.3K and, and peaks at 1.5 before tailing off again. Um, so if you wanted to have, and we see that's also where the transition of the phase is happening. So if we wanted to have more detail of this transition, we could go into the AC sweep and add in frequency blocks here. So we could explicitly call out that we wanted to have uh, extra frequencies, extra resolution in this zone. Because it stands right now, we have um, we have put in um, a number of points. So we could maybe potentially run this with uh, fewer points and then add in a couple of points um, here to cover this bump. Uh, frequency 1.5, 1.5k, 1.6k, 1.7k. So I've, re I've reduced the number of points and I've added in a number of points to, to cover this, this curve to make sure that we can, that we get the, that um, shape appropriately. So let's run now with fewer points. 
and we'll end up running a lot faster and we can see that we've got some points now clumped in around there and we have a little bit rougher of a transition at this point but in general it, this gives us a good thing to, to work with and it went a, a decent amount faster. Um, so yeah from here now we could probably import this smart control or some other uh, control loop design software package and um, go from there.